Welcome to the NC Spin After Spin. Additional comments from our panelists just available on our website. I want to ask each of you, what do you wish you had said on last week's show, but you didn't? John Hood, I'll start with you. Tom, I made reference in the last segment to the fact that about 16% or so of North Carolina's economy is, is represented by trade, either imports into the state or exports to other countries out of the state. Uh, it's a little bit higher than the national average, but actually it was, I was interested to learn that most of our neighbors it's, have a much higher percentage. I mean, in South Carolina, trade is a third of their entire economy, about a quarter of the economy in, in Georgia. Um, that's is that be because they have better that, ports? Partially, but what, what's the story there is in South Carolina, it's Boeing and auto plants in Kentucky and Tennessee, which also have much higher percentages. It's auto plants. Some of this has to do with the fact that North Carolina produces a lot of product that is sold around the country. Think agriculture products, think services, financial services. That's an export from North Carolina to other states, but not as much to other countries. Still, the Southeast as a whole is heavily integrated into the uh, international trading system. And any kind of a trade war set off by bad tax policy or tariffs would have a devastating effect in the southeast. There are other states that it wouldn't have as big an effect on, but in the southeast it would be a disaster. I think Larry Wooten at the Farm Bureau told me exports of farm products uh, is as much as $30 billion a year in North Yeah, that's Carolina. a big part of, of the export market for North Carolina. Large part of it. Bob Orr, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? Well, we were talking uh, last week about consideration of, of a study or revision of the North Carolina Constitution, and John had suggested the Orr Hood Commission as a vehicle for <laughs> studying it. I yeah. agreed to that name. That's right. Well, anyway, okay. uh, but in 1968, which was the last time this took place, it was a commission put together by the North Carolina Bar Association and the state bar which put together a proposed constitution and proposed amendments, which was then submitted to the legislature, which had to vote on whether the revised constitution would be approved by the, uh, the public in a vote. Uh, it may be a good idea to study it, but it would take a group like the Bar Association to be the leader in doing it as opposed to a legislative commission. And, and I think you told me uh, off camera a week or so ago that uh, there were a number of issues proposed by that study commission that never saw the light of the day in, in the legislature. That's correct. And, but, you know, they were considered, for example, the superintendent of public instruction was proposed to no longer be elected. That was one of the proposed amendments. Uh, the legislature decided not to submit that to the public. So, yes, I mean, the, ultimately, the choice of what goes to the public uh, is up to the legislature. Cash Michaels, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? I, I take um, Justice Orr and, and, um, and, and his partner uh, here, partner uh, <laughs> your partner yeah. in crime, I take their point about boycotts. Um, and, and yet, um, I, I think if you look at it closer regarding the NAACP uh, threat uh, to, boy, uh, to boycott North Carolina, it, it, politically, I think it's potent in that by announcing a boycott or one that one is coming, the people you already have engaged uh, politically against the legislature and, and its policies, you now give them a, a, a target. Now, together, they may not be able to bring about the huge impact that one would think a boycott uh, can and should do. But what it does do, it, it makes other companies looking at North Carolina kind of think twice. Do I really want to be on, on the bad side of these folks? Do I want to be on the bad side of the Moral Monday movement, for instance? Do I want my, my company's brand mixed up with that kind of stuff and then have to deal with the NAACP, Barber, and, and whoever else? Um, so I, I, I think it's shrewd. And also, too, in, in the age of Trump, where people have no problem leaving their homes or whatever else to get out in the street and, and, and let it be known that they're not happy, uh, I think calling for a boycott at this point in time in history, um, I think, is, is genius. We'll have to wait and see. Chris Fitzsimon, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? Well, we talked about the battle between the uh, governor and the General Assembly and the courts on a variety of issues, and I, we've, may have, we've mentioned this a little bit before, but I continue to be concerned about the rhetoric that we have in our political system about the courts. Uh, you remember after the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals uh, struck down North Carolina's uh, voting law that, uh, with voter ID and same-day registration, 
uh, the Senate and House leaders talked about the, uh, the justices must, must want to have voter fraud to elect Hillary Clinton, which I thought was astounding. Mm -hmm. They lost a case of, uh, they lost one round of these uh, battles not long ago, and they said if, if these judges want to run for the legislature, they ought to put down their robe and run for the General Assembly. It used to be we would say, I disagree, I still believe that this is a good law, or I still believe this is unconstitutional. Now we're personally attacking the judges. The when so called judges. The so called judges, yes. which gets to the sort of final point, and Cash mentioned Trump. It's almost as if the, we've had this Trumpization somehow of the attitude about our judiciary. We could disagree, we could even complain, we could do all other things, but we've gotten to where now. I don't know how anybody has any faith in the in the third branch of government the way the way our politicians, especially unfortunately, the current leadership of the General Assembly, not only complains when they lose, but really strikes out at the judges, many of whom, by the way, in many cases are Republicans or appointed by Republicans. This is not all Democrats doing all this. Isn't this though symptomatic, Chris, uh, Chris <clears throat> of the lack of trust? In, in most all institutions. Well, it's now. symptom, but I mean, the politicians are creating the lack of trust. Disagree all you want, but don't say somebody's trying to get somebody elected illegally if they're a judge, or don't say that they they ought to run for office and they're they're you know they they've gone too far. There's a way to talk about these decisions, and I don't think we're served well by the way we're talking about them. You now. better be careful. You might be wiretapped. Well, thanks for watching the After Spin. We'll have more video all during the week on ncspin.com.